The TM1100 tapping machine drills and taps pressurized water mains for direct insertion of a corporation stop. The TM1100 can be used on 4-inch through 48-inch cast or ductile iron and C900 PVC. The base machine requires saddles for specific size pipe and chain extensions above 16-inch mains. The TM1100 uses Reed DT series drill taps. To operate the TM1100, follow these steps. Keep in mind, the maximum operating pressure for this tool is 90 PSI. When using a power clevis, the maximum operating pressure is 250 PSI. Do not use this tool on pipes containing natural gas or petroleum. The first step in the process is to select the proper items necessary to perform the tap. These items include a corporation stop, a drill tap size to match the corporation stop threads, the proper size saddle, and the proper size corporation insertion tool. The reed tapping machine kit includes necessary components for correct tapping operations. Begin the tapping process by cleaning the area where the tap will occur using a Reed DS12 or DS36 descaler. Connect the saddle and gasket together. Then, fit the sealing disc into the center hole. Once the saddle gasket assembly is ready, place it on the pipe with the disc positioned upward. Place the machine chamber onto the disc gasket recess and position the machine so the swing valve is on the same side as the operator. Place the chain hooks and swivels into slots on both sides of the chamber. Connect the chain to one of the chain hooks. Bring the chain under the pipe and connect to the nearest link on the opposite side. Do not twist or create kinks in the chain. Make sure the chain links are laid across the hooks as shown. Finally, hand tighten the nuts. The next step will position the chamber at a desired angle. Tighten down the chain nuts evenly using an adjustable wrench or a one and a quarter inch socket wrench. Ensure the gaskets make good contact and verify that the chain holds the machinery securely onto the pipe and saddle. Verify that the selected corporation stop matches the size intended and confirm that the drill tap size is correct. Generously coat the tap with reed tapping compound. Use of tapping compound can extend the life of the drill tap. Next, push the knockout pin in the boring bar to its holding position, which is toward the flat side of the bearing. The retaining bolt needs to be retracted far enough to allow the drill tap to seat properly. Insert the shank end of the drill tap and align the pin with slots in the bar end. Make sure the tool is securely seated and lightly tighten the tool retaining screw. Retract the tool end of the boring bar all the way into the top cap. Next, assemble the top and bottom halves. Verify that your swing valve is open. The upper ball valve is shut and the pressure balancing valve with the star knob is also shut. Then, hand tighten the boring bar top cap onto the top chamber. Push down the boring bar slowly until the bit touches the pipe. Snap the yoke over the bearing assembly and adjust the star feed as necessary. Place the ratchet wrench on top of the boring bar. Drill through the pipe by turning the ratchet wrench clockwise and turning the star feed clockwise in a smooth and consistent manner. If the boring bar and star feed turns easily, that will indicate that drilling through the pipe wall has been completed. Hand feed the drill down and allow the tapping portion to guide itself in. If appropriate, open the ball valve to allow the flushing of chips while drilling. Feed the drill tap down. When the tapping threads make contact with a pipe wall, you should feel some resistance. 
Begin tapping by rotating the ratchet wrench. Continuously turn the star feed and rotate in a smooth and constant manner. Do not force the star feed, as it will strip the threads. Once threads are engaged by at least one revolution, back off the star feed yoke and continue to feed. Continue tapping until the beginning of the groove in the boring bar sits flush with the top of the brass threaded body. This depth should result in a satisfactory tap. Consult the drill tap manufacturer's instructions and consider conducting dry taps to determine a depth that works best. To safely remove the tool after tapping, begin by reversing the ratchet handle. Once the tap is free of the pipe, retract the boring bar to its uppermost position. Be careful, as water pressure will retract the boring bar. Next, move the swing valve to the closed position by pushing down on the handle and turning. It will spring up into the chamber. The pressure relief valve needs to be opened to release pressure in the top chamber and closed before removing the boring bar. It might be worthwhile to flush the chips out as well. Unscrew and remove the top cap and boring bar assembly from the valve chamber. Loosen the tool retaining screw and strike the end of the knockout pin to release the drill tap. Once the hole is drilled, prepare the corporation stop for insertion into the pipe. Make sure the corporation stop is closed so water cannot pass through. Begin by removing the flare or compression nut. Then, screw on the insertion tool. And finally, connect the adapter shank. Push the knockout pin in the boring bar to its holding position toward the flat side of the bearing sleeve. Insert the tapered end of the adapter shank into the boring bar and align the pin with the slots in the bar end. Lightly tighten the tool retaining screw. Verify that the boring bar retracts all the way into the top cap and then apply the non-toxic pipe dope to the corporation inlet threads. Finally, screw the entire assembly into the valve chamber. To insert the corporation stop after assembly, attach the ratchet wrench onto the boring bar and adjust it for clockwise rotation. Turn the star knob counterclockwise one turn to balance the pressure. Push down on the swing valve handle and open it. Push the boring bar down until the corporation stop threads touch the pipe, then re-engage the flip clamp. Pipe pressure resists the corporation installation. Re-engaging the flip clamp allows the operator to mechanically feed the corporation into the pipe wall instead of having to force it down while turning. To start the engagement, rotate the boring bar clockwise while also carefully turning the star feed clockwise. Once the threads are engaged, disengage the yoke. Continue to tighten until satisfactory. Open the chip flush valve to relieve pressure. If pressure does not immediately drop, further tighten the corporation stop into the pipe. Next, release the corporation adapter by reversing the ratchet counterclockwise until the adapter shank is completely free. The final step in the process is machine removal. Begin by removing the boring bar assembly, then by loosening the chain hook nuts and unhooking the chain. Remove the hooks and carefully remove the machine, saddle, and gaskets. Place them all on a clean surface. Tighten the corporation stop using a suitable wrench on the inlet thread side. Finally, remove the corporation insertion tool with an adjustable wrench. Reassemble the flare or compression nut to the outlet threads. After tapping is complete, clean and oil the machine surfaces. If necessary, the top and bottom chambers can be easily disassembled to clean more thoroughly. Remove and wipe down the adapter shank and insertion tool. If necessary, flush the bottom chamber with a water hose to remove any chips. Make sure not to hammer the frames to remove the chips or debris. Protect threaded pieces by assembling them with their mating parts. Periodically, inspect the boring bar's O-ring seals and replace them if worn. O-rings are found in the top cap and in the threaded body. Carefully place the tool back in the toolbox for storage. 
This completes the TM1100 tapping procedure. For more information, please consult the TM1100 tapping machine manual.